They called it revolutionary, a method of teaching medicine that imposed rigid entrance exams, incorporated science, laboratory research, and bedside instruction. Johns Hopkins Medicine was way ahead of its time in 1893. Fast forward to 2018, a much different world with much different challenges. And in some ways, a much different, but still revolutionary approach to medical discovery. The School of Medicine admitted women from the time its doors opened in 1893. Today, Hopkins has graduated 2,543 women. Johns Hopkins decreed that services would be provided without regard to sex, age, or color. In fact, the second patient to receive services after the hospital opened its doors in 1889 was African American. Today, about one in every five medical students at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine is an underrepresented minority. William Stewart Halstead, the hospital's first surgeon in chief, is widely credited as the first to develop and introduce rubber surgical gloves in the United States. Today, we use these. In 2017, the hospital purchased 103,066,199 of them. The tools we used for medical discovery have come a long way. A century ago, that meant concentrating on the causes of disease. But nowadays, with new advances like CRISPR, we can actually manipulate and edit genes to treat or even prevent diseases. Johns Hopkins Medicine blazed new trails with its medical curriculum. Back then, students learned about normal and abnormal biology and physiology. Today, we learn the full spectrum of healthcare, including how it is impacted by our genes and our environment. Medical students learn this firsthand through volunteering at community sites like this. Back in 1893, residents lived together in one spot. Today, we live all over the city and only work 80 hours a week. Here's a fun fact. William Mosler used to require his residents and trainees to stay in the hospital so they were closer to their patient. That's where the term residents come from. <laughs> I guess some of us still need our beauty sleep. In 1893, the School of Medicine had not one single building dedicated to teaching. Today, this expansion of our medical campus looks like this. Fun fact, when the Science and Technology Park is fully built out, It'll be 1.1 million square feet of space. One thing that has never changed is that PhD students have access to great facilities and great scientists. And there's another important tradition at Hopkins that continues today. From the very beginning, students, residents, and fellows cared deeply about their patients. And now, 125 years later, medical students, residents, and fellows still care deeply about their patients. Some things just don't change. Johns Hopkins Medicine, where tradition meets innovation. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow.